Radio. How we doing out there, everybody? Happy New Year to you and yours from us here at Rouge Radio, our first show, first episode of the New Year 2014. My name is Tyler Bieber. I am, of course, your host. And uh, a little bit of, I guess, breaking news if you're listening live. As reported by C-Job Sports in Winnipeg, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have tabbed Gary Echeverry to be the team's defensive coordinator under new head coach Mike O'Shea. Uh, the two go back. O'Shea, of course, had the lengthy playing career with the Toronto Argonauts and Hamilton Tiger Cats. And Gary Echeverry was the defensive coordinator and defensive line coach of the Toronto Argonauts from 1997 to 1999 while Mike O'Shea was with the Argos, and then he was the head coach for a brief period of time in 2002 as well. So there's that connection. Gary Echeverry, 57 years old, most recently was the head coach of the Ottawa GGs in the CIS before being fired after a winless start. Graduated from the legendary program of USC in the NCAA. Formerly coached with An NFL legend, Mike Holmgren, back at San Francisco State University, has a wealth of experience at the college level, has some time in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams, um, quite a bit of time in the German Football League, and of course, a vast experience in the Canadian Football League with, of course, the Argos. He's been with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as a defensive coordinator, the Ottawa Red Blacks as the linebackers coach and defensive line coach, the BC Lions as a defensive coordinator, and uh, also with the UBC Thunderbirds in the CIS as well. So there's that for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who are looking like they're starting to form some sort of coaching staff out there. So far they've had a special teams coordinator, an offensive coordinator, and a receiver's coach announced, but it looks like it's going to be Gary Echeverry announced as the defensive coordinator there in Winnipeg very shortly. Now, in case you've been away for about a month's time and have missed everything that's gone on in the Canadian Football League, then we have the perfect show for you here, as we're going to run over everything, or mostly everything, whatever we have allowed for time here, that you may have missed over the break. And we'll look ahead to what's going to happen in about a month's time when the free agency period rolls around and the first real landmark of the CFL offseason gets started. Of course, we had the expansion draft last month. Um, The Ottawa Red Blacks, their roster starting to get a little bit of a shape, a little bit formed here. And if you recall on our last show, we had the inaugural head coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks, Rick Campbell. And we talked about the next steps in his day-to-day operations as the head coach and what what he was trying to plan out, whether it would be the coaching staff, you know, maybe some more player signings or something like that. It was, in fact, the coaching staff, and not too long after we talked to Rick, I believe about one or two days, the Red Blacks did indeed announce who will join him on the sidelines in the 2014 CFL season as assistant coaches, and they are as follows. Offensive coordinator will be Mike Gibson, and he joins Campbell from the Calgary Stampeders, where he served as the team's offensive line coach. Previously held jobs with the Tiger Cats, the Rough Riders, the Bombers, and various programs in the NCAA has a ton of experience as a coach, as well as a defensive coordinator. 26 seasons coaching at both the professional and collegiate level. That is Mark Nelson. He comes over from the Montreal Alouettes where he worked as the linebackers coach and he's also served time in the CFL with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Toronto Argonauts, San Antonio Texans, that's way back when, hey, U.S. expansion right there, and the Edmonton Eskimos. Special teams coordinator and running backs coach will be Don Janowski, another guy coming over from the Calgary Stampeders where he served as the team's linebacker coach for the past two seasons. Majority of his career was in the NCAA Uh, A couple bigger schools that he worked at, LSU, Boston College, Duke. There's a couple more out there as well. Quarterbacks coach, Marcus Crandall, the former quarterback, obviously. Uh, A year away from coaching, following his release from the Edmonton Eskimos as offensive coordinator in the 2012 season, re-enters the coaching ranks here as the Red Blacks quarterbacks coach, an 11-year veteran. Of the CFL playing the position. He was the 2001 Grey Cup MVP, 
leading the Calgary Stampeders to an upset victory over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Also played for the Edmonton Eskimos and Saskatchewan Rough Riders while serving two years as an assistant coach with those Rough Riders following his playing career after the 2008 season. Wide receivers coach Travis Moore, another longtime veteran player of the CFL. He spent Last season with the Edmonton Eskimos as the receivers coach, has previous coaching experience with the BC Lions and Hamilton Tiger Cats. Most notable playing days were with the Calgary Stampeders. He spent seven seasons Calgary winning two Great Cup championships, including that 2001 Great Cup game that I just mentioned with Marcus Crandall being the MVP. Defensive backs coach Ike Charlton. Now, this is his first true professional coaching role. He's been a guest coach with Calgary and Edmonds in the past two years. Joins the Red Black staff with several years playing experience in both the NFL and the CFL. He's a former 52nd overall, that's second round draft pick of the Seattle Seahawks in 2000. Spent six seasons in the NFL playing with those Seahawks, the Jaguars, Giants, Raiders, and the Patriots. Came up to Canada, joined the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, spent time with the Montreal Alouettes, and was a Great Cup champion there in 2010 as well. And one of the biggest things for me, when you're starting out as a head coach for the first time, and you know this could even apply to being a coordinator or you know really any coach at the professional level, and that's experience. If you're coming in for the first time, you want to surround yourself with guys who know what they're doing. And guys who, if things go wrong and you start to get into trouble, you can lean on them a little bit. Now, I think for the most part, you expect to have success when you're stepping into a new job and a new role. But, you know, there's going to be some struggles over the course of time. Nobody runs through this game perfect every single season, every single game. There's going to be some times where you need to rely on those guys. And Rick Campbell has clearly set himself up with two coordinators in Mike Gibson and Mark Nelson who have well over 40 years combined coaching the game of football and most notably quality CFL experience. And sometimes you'll have a coach who comes in to oversee the offense or oversee the defense and he has plenty of coaching experience at different levels of football but is seeing the CFL game for the first time and it may not go exactly as planned. And just because he's the most recent example that I can think of, we're going to go back to former Winnipeg Blue Bombers offensive coordinator Gary Croton. And he struggled to find offensive consistency over two seasons with the Blue Bombers and, of course, was fired this past season. You know, he was he was with LSU. He was with Maryland. Made, made some impacts at the college level, but just couldn't get it done in the CFL. And my personal favorite hire on the staff is Marcus Crandall. You have here a brilliant young mind who I think maybe got thrown into the fire a little bit too early in calling plays for the Eskimos in 2012, and for that reason, perhaps was quickly out of a job, but I think with a little bit more seasoning and experience, and this comes at the coaching position too, not just playing quarterback in the CFL, believe me, you have to have the experience in coaching and see this firsthand. It's not just about a quarterback getting the advice from a coach right? Because a coach can help a player, but a player can also help a coach, or a coach might need some more guidance from a guy who has more experience, right? And I think a little bit more of that from Marcus Crandall is going to help him to develop into a coordinator and a guy who can run an offense year to year and have sustained success. And I think it's very much the same for Kahari Jones, who was named the offensive coordinator of the BC Lions. And so we mentioned before, you heard, you heard the news before, Jacques Chaptelin and the BC Lions decided to part ways. It was an up-and-down 2013 season. They struggled, I think, to find a pace for the bulk of the year, and even star running back Andrew Harris himself questioned whether Chaptelin believed in him to take on a heavy role and make a serious impact for the team. And when a guy who's supposed to be your star running back is saying something like that in the media. You have a problem. And that was the biggest thing for me with Jock Chaplin, just watching from the outside and watching that BC Lions offense. They have so much potential, but they're so pedestrian about it. 
And it just never made any sense to me why they couldn't be the top offense in the league year after year. Now, granted, towards the end of this season, I was quite impressed with what Jock Chaplin did in terms of innovation with the offense, and he utilized Harris and Stefan Logan quite impressively in my eyes, but the team was one and done in the playoffs, losing to, of course, the eventual Grey Cup champion Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and seemingly that was the last straw for head coach Mike Benavides and his time with Jock Chaplin. So they're bringing in Kahari Jones, who comes from those Grey Cup champions, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, where he helped mentor quarterback Darian Durant to his finest season yet in the Canadian Football League en route to that championship game and the victory over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, while Travis Lule is a former league most outstanding player, I'd still look for Kari Jones to help even polish the skills further of Lule and help him really accelerate to the next level. Uh, I know that there's been a little bit of thought, maybe from some fans in BC, that Lule might be regressing a little bit, but I think with the proper guidance and the leadership from Kahari Jones, you're going to notice that he's going to have a bounce-back season, if you even want to call it a bounce-back season. I mean, personally, I think the guy's doing just fine. He got a little bit dinged up late last season, but the BC Lions are more than okay with Travis Lule at quarterback. And that, of course, wasn't the only coordinator news coming out of BC. Defensive coordinator Rich Stubler and the team also parted ways. Two seasons with the club, Rich Stubler spent, um, thought to be going to Winnipeg and joining his former player, Michael Shea, as the team's defensive coordinator. But as it turned out, he decided to head over to the Calgary Stampeders and join John Huffnangle's coaching staff as they were looking for a new defensive coordinator with the obvious departure of now Ottawa Red Blacks head coach, Rick Campbell. Stubler has coached in each of the last four decades, winning four Grey Cup championships. Obviously, he brings a vast knowledge and experience to the Calgary Stampeders defense. And uh, <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if you're Rich Stubler, or even if you think about Rich Stubler going to the Calgary Stampeders, he's got to be smiling. I mean, this was one of the top defensive units in the league already under Rick Campbell last season. They have a ton of talent there especially if they're able to retain most of it. You know, you have guys like Cordero Law trying to catch on in the NFL, and it's looking like Cordero Law might be able to do that, having a couple tryouts, most recently with the Seattle Seahawks and Pittsburgh Steelers. But you've got to like the position you're in if you're Rich Stubler to find success quickly with that Calgary Stampeders defense. Now, in replacing Stubler in BC, the Lions promoted defensive backs coach Mark Washington to the role. A former player for current head coach Mike Benavides, Washington was raved about by both Benavides and current players on the roster for his attention to detail and ability to process information and relay it in efficient manners. Uh, Benavides felt that he and Washington saw more eye-to-eye in terms of a defensive scheme than he did with Stubler, and then, you know perhaps that triggered the change in defensive philosophy, and it's very likely that it did. Um, one of the top priorities, I think, and I mean, it's pretty obvious if you look at the stats from last season and even look at some of the game tape of the BC Lions defense, that pass rush, it's so crucial and so integral to the game of football, winning the line of scrimmage. You hear it all the time. It's not just a saying. It's a massive part of the game of football. And the BC Lions, for the bulk of the 2013 season, just did not get anything out of their pass rush. And that defense, you know, it, it's really mind-boggling that they, they were as successful as they were on pass defense. Because generally, if you can't get to the quarterback, guys are going to get open and you're going to be able to pick them apart. But that's more of a credit to the defensive backs they have there. Ryan Phillips, Corey Banks, Dante Marsh, Lynn J. Shell. You know, those guys locked it down for that BC Lions defense when the pass rush just couldn't get there. And that has got to be a top priority coming up this offseason, and I think it will be in terms of what Mike Benavides and Mark Washington are going to want to do to help improve and make an immediate improvement with this BC Lions defense going forward in the 2014 season. Now going back to Mike Gibson, who left the Stampeders to go to the Ottawa Red Blacks, they brought in former Winnipeg Blue Bombers offensive line coach Pat Delmonico, and he's going to guide the Calgary Stampeders Hoggies 
John Huffnagel said that he was impressed with what Delmonico was able to do in four seasons with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I think it's safe to say that he inherits a much stronger and more well, more well-rounded group, excuse me, to coach in Calgary than he ever had in Winnipeg. And speaking of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they announced the hiring of Pat Tracy to be the team's special teams coordinator. And if that name isn't all too familiar with you, it's, it's simply likely just because you haven't exactly paid the most attention to the CIS over the past 14 years, served the bulk of his time as the defensive coordinator at the University of Queens was a member of the 2009 Vanier Cup championship team, originally started at Queens as a special teams coordinator. Bombers also announced that they've retained receivers coach Marcus Howell for a fourth year, bringing back the former CFL every man. This will be Howell's 15th season, either playing or coaching in the Canadian Football League. Now, switching gears a little bit, and the Toronto Argonauts seem to be the most popular destination for an American player to sign when they're coming in as a free agent. And the events of the past two off-seasons appear to be why. You know, you can't really deny, especially on the American side of things, that if you're coming from the NFL... In an NFL training camp, you were a cut, and you're looking to continue your career somewhere else. You go to the CFL, you work on your skills, you get coached up, you get on film, show the NFL scouts what you can do, and then you progress back towards the National Football League. You know, it happened with Cameron Wick. A cut of the New York Giants came to the CFL, tore it up, almost broke records, and has been a very key part of the Miami Dolphins' defense ever since. You know, it's happened before. Warren Moon, Doug Flutie, these guys who play in both the NFL and CFL and get a really good chance to make an impact in the NFL because of it. Last season for the Toronto Argonauts, it was defensive tackle Armand Armstead who was released from his contract to sign with the New England Patriots. This year, the club released receiver Dontrell Inman, and he signed with the San Diego Chargers. And just recently, they let let go defensive back Nigel Thorpe, and he's gone back to the NFL signing with the Oakland Raiders. Now, it's an interesting but tough way of life about the Canadian Football League. As I mentioned, players want to play in the NFL especially if you're an American football player. If you're born in Canada, you know more likely the dream is to play in the CFL, and there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, the CFL is a great league, and it's going to have even more sustained success as we roll on towards here, having the Ottawa Red Blacks coming in. But the NFL is where all the money is. And the players don't want to wait out the duration of their contract to get another shot if they light it up in the CFL in their first season. Now, Formerly, a player could sign a two-year contract. In the second year of that contract, you would have the option for the player to sign with an NFL team. Now, a few years ago, the CFL took that clause out of the contracts, and now you can only sign with an NFL team after your full contract expires. Or, perhaps you have a written agreement or a verbal agreement seemingly like the Toronto Argonauts do with all of their American free agent signings, that you release the player if he's going to get a chance to sign with an NFL team. And that seems to be the case for the Toronto Argonauts and the destination to be for those type of players. And I mean, it's more power to the Toronto Argonauts if you can keep filling in the spots by losing these guys. You have talented players that can make an immediate impact on your roster, and you know you can continually compete for a great cup. So it's not a bad idea, as long as you can handle losing these players and as long as you can find a replacement. What are your thoughts? Hit us up at Rouge Radio at Tyler A. Bieber on Twitter. Let us know what you think about that. Uh, the CBA is coming up here. They're going to have a new agreement. Will that be in there? What's going to be the case with that? We're not sure. 
It'll be interesting to see the new details coming out. If the cap's going to be continuing to go up in the future, I think it will. What's it going to be? You know, we'll talk about that later on in the off season here. And just getting back to what we were just talking about, sometimes things don't work out for the players who leave the CFL to go for the NFL dream, and they quickly come back. And that was the case for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers last month, and they were the beneficiaries of defensive end Jason Vega re-signing with the team. He spent the 2013 season in the National Football League with the New England Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys. 2011 and 2012 with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Vega had a total of 66 tackles and 12 sacks, also played in the 2011 Great Cup game with the team. Quarterback news. Montreal Alouettes. Anthony Calvillo. January 21st, the playing status announcement. And it's sounding like it's going to be the retirement. And what a career it was for Anthony Calvillo, if this is indeed it. Tough way to go out with the concussion symptoms and all that but truly a remarkable career for Anthony Calvillo in the Canadian Football League. We'll talk more about that on the next show, assuming that is the case. But the Alouettes announced contract extensions for Tanner Marsh and Troy Smith. Tanner Marsh's biggest moment in the 2013 Canadian Football League season came on a last-second play. Deep downfield finding Eric Delorier setting up a game-winning field goal from Sean White to defeat the BC Lions a game in which Tanner Marsh turned the ball over several times but still stuck with it and got the win. Now, the latter of the two, former Heisman Trophy winner Troy Smith, took over the starting quarterback role late in the season, guiding the team to a 2-1 finish before starting the East Division semifinal game, which was, of course, a loss to the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And we talked about this before, but I think Troy Smith is a good quarterback to have and with a little more work, could really develop into a star in the league. Now, as always, my biggest concern with Troy Smith is his consistency. And by that, we're largely talking about the ability to string together drives that end in touchdowns and not field goals. Ultimately, that was the downfall for the Montreal Alouettes in the playoffs with their offense. They had arguably the best defense in the entire league in the 2013 season. But the offensive consistency just was not there. And going forward, it's going to have to be there for Troy Smith, Jim Pop, and the Montreal Alouettes, or you're going to have the same old story. I mean, they have some key key parts in place. Jamel Richardson's coming back. S.J. Green is still there. You had Deron Carter, who has seemingly developed into what will be a top receiving target in the Canadian Football League. These guys are in place for the Montreal Alouettes offense to succeed. They need the quarterback play to be better. And Troy Smith has got to be more consistent. He might be the best playmaker in the league. Now, that's tough to say immediately, given the guys that are there. You know, he doesn't have the drop-back passing skills of uh, Ricky Ray. But overall, I think he can be a playmaker as well as anybody else, as well as a Darian Durant, you know, Henry Burris, the guys who just escape the pocket and can make a play. I think Troy Smith has that potential. But for me, it always comes back to the consistency. Is he going to be able to find an open target when he breaks contain? What's he going to do? Is he going to throw an interception on a silly mistake because he doesn't know where he's going with the football? That was his problem in the National Football League. That was his problem big games at Ohio State. Troy Smith has got to be a more consistent quarterback. And if Anthony Calvillo is retiring, will he join the Montreal Alouettes on the sideline? What's his future going to look like? He could mentor Troy Smith into seeing more of the field, progressing through your reads, finding the guy you have to find, to make a first down. 
and gradually getting to a place where Troy Smith can get you where you need to be, ending these drives in touchdowns and not the field goals. Now, speaking of Montreal Alouette's quarterbacks, going to go to a former quarterback. Calgary Stampeders have brought back Adrian McPherson to the Canadian Football League. He was a free agent after the 2012 season, did not sign with anybody, and instead went to the Arena Football League. He joined the Tampa Bay Storm, had 59 passing touchdowns, 31 rushing touchdowns. He broke some records on the shortened playing surface. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to gauge how impressive it is because, I mean, it's a really small field. I believe it's about 50 to 60 yards, somewhere in there. And so it's not like it's a standard CFL size field or an NFL size field and you're going out there and putting up 59 touchdowns. You know, the game is designed to score points in the Arena Football League if you've never seen the game. Oftentimes the scores are in the combined 140 point totals. But is a, a year away from the game what Adrian McPherson needed? A year away from the Canadian Football League to give him a little bit more confidence and, you know, get his mindset to a place that, yeah, maybe he can make a difference in the Canadian Football League. Now, I can't imagine a scenario where Adrian McPherson is going to be the starter of the Calgary Stampeders, especially with Bo Levi, Mitchell, and Drew Tate there. Although even they are a little bit unfounded. You know, we've seen Bo Levi Mitchell make plays but we've also seen him struggle more recently when he had more playing time. And when Drew Tate first got his shot with the Calgary Stampeders and he had touchdown after touchdown after touchdown and wasn't turning the football over, you know, everybody was talking about, okay, Drew Tate's going to be the next great quarterback in the league. That was the initial reaction, right? As things wore on, Drew Tate became a little bit injury prone started to turn the football over, didn't make as many plays. And now everybody's questioning whether the Calgary Stampeders are in an okay situation here with who they have at quarterback. Kevin Glenn is out of the picture. He's in, he's in Ottawa, the likely starter with the Red Blacks. Be very interesting to see what happens at the quarterback position with the Calgary Stampeders. Now, last topic for the evening here, first episode of 2014 here on Rouge Radio. CFL draft is upcoming in May. CFL Scouting Bureau released its winter rankings, the top 15, and it reads like this. Top prospect available is still McGill offensive lineman Laurent Duvernay-Tardif. Moving up from fourth to second is Laval offensive lineman Pierre Lavertou. Staying in third is offensive lineman David Foucault out of the University of Montreal. Dropping from second to fourth, St. FX receiver Devin Bailey. Biggest leap on the board from 15th all the way up to number five is Simon Frazier, offensive lineman Matthias Goosen. Manitoba defensive lineman Evan Gill, who was unranked last time, jumped up to number six. Western linebacker Bo Landry dropped from 6 to 7. Andrew Liu, a defensive back out of Queens, remains at number 8. The well-rounded and impressive running back out of the University of Manitoba, Anthony Coombs, was unranked last time, but is now number 9. Concordia linebacker Max Caron drops from 7th to 10th. Simon Fraser linebacker Casey Chin moves up one spot from number 12 to number 11. Queens linebacker Sam Sabrian dropped from 9th to 12th. Adam Tebow, defensive back of the Laval, had the biggest drop on the board from 5th to 13th. Also dropping down on the board was Queens defensive lineman Derek Wigan. He went from 10th to 14th. And rounding out the rankings, Western defensive lineman Dylan Ainsworth, who was unranked last time. And next up for the players will be the CFL Combine, which will be held in Toronto from March 21st to March 23rd. Following that, I believe, will be the final Scouting Bureau rankings. And then after that, in early May, the 2014 CFL Draft. You look at that top 15 ranking list, and we'll talk about it more in the coming months as we get closer to the dates of 
the combine and the draft. But a lot of offensive linemen and a lot of linebackers. And that's where you see the most talent coming out in recent years in Canada, in these drafts. Guys who can step in and fill a spot, whether it's on special teams or even plug and play if you have an injury. You know, you've seen top picks like Ben Heenan with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Enoch Mwamba with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, guys developing into stars and top players at their positions so fast. And that's going to continue to be the way in the CFL. And these guys are going to even get looks down south. And we'll see what happens from there. But with that, we're going to wrap up things here on the first episode of Rouge Radio in 2014. Our next scheduled live show will be on January 29th, and we'll be going heavy, expecting the announcement of Anthony Calvillo's retirement and the legacy that he leaves on the Canadian Football League. As always, you can check out the podcast, rougeradio.com, as well as various other ways to check us out, iTunes, YouTube, there's a Rouge Radio app, more Just check it out, rougeradio.com. Thanks once again for joining us here on Rouge Radio. My name is Tyler Bieber, and we will talk to you soon.